I'm really excited to share the things that that I know about spiritual gifts that I've learned about spiritual gifts, gifts and talents and those things that we have to offer the world, you know, like, why are we here? We look in the scriptures, like John said, but why am I here? That's what everyone wants to know. Why am I here? I have a mission to accomplish. I have something to do in this life. And I think everybody feels that way. And then also maybe a feeling that everybody feels is, what is it? <laughs> what am I supposed to do after? And we think, oh, my, my talents and my abilities and my spiritual gifts, as I search through my patriarchal blessing, like, how are these really going to affect, you know, my life or anybody else's life? These seem so minimal and small. I remember seeing a girl in school and I felt kind of bad for her because, you know, she didn't dance like I did. And she didn't, you know, she wasn't friendly like I was, and she didn't have these, these other kinds of outgoing people affecting talents like I did. And I felt a little bit bad for her and she and I were friends and stuff. And now later looking back and I still know her, she is truly amazing. And the spiritual gifts that she has affect people in a very, very wonderful, deep way. She's a nurse. She just adopted three foster kids. She's a beautiful human who utilizes her gifts in a wonderful way. I have right here a scripture that I pulled from DNC 6433. Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing, for ye are laying of the foundation of a great work, and out of small things proceedeth that which is great. I'm grateful for that adjective right there, out of small things proceedeth that which is great, because sometimes the our biggest influence on this world is going to be through the small or the seemingly small talents and gifts that we possess. Um, like I said, I used to dance and I used to walk and I used to have, you know, be able to use my hands and stuff, but now I'm in a wheelchair. And I know that everybody looks like a wheelchair when they do a Zoom fireside, John and Hank and Mark. I mean, their disabilities are way worse. Just kidding. But they, they are not in wheelchairs, but everybody looks like they're in a wheelchair. And now you know that I'm wearing jeans for this fireside. Shh, don't tell anyone. And so, um, but now I had to prove that I was because everybody looks like like they're paralyzed when they're doing a Zoom fireside. I fell off a cliff 16 years ago when I was hiking and I left all of my big talents at the bottom of some red rocks in Southern Utah. All of a sudden I couldn't dance anymore and I couldn't walk anymore and I couldn't use my hands anymore. I couldn't do the things that I used to do. I couldn't you know, go rock climbing or hiking and I didn't have those talents and abilities and they were all gone. And it made me feel like I didn't have very much to offer this world. And so I read, I read, let's see, it's an ether. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men who humble themselves before me, for I will make weak things become strong unto them. I think sometimes when we have talents taken away from us, or when we feel like we don't have talents and we add up our talents and strengths and, and our weaknesses and disabilities, no matter who we are, and we're going to have all these disabilities and weaknesses and trials and hardships in our lives. It seems like that list way outnumbers our strengths. But I want to talk about that. Maybe those changes in our life's plan. Elder Rasband said, sometimes we consider changes in our plans as missteps on our journey. Think of them more as being first steps to being on the Lord's errand. The Lord has an errand for each one of us. When I, I remember I was sitting in my wheelchair in front of a full length mirror, looking at myself and I started to cry. And I thought, I'm never going to be able to teach my kids how to dance like I always thought I would. And then I started to cry even harder because I thought, well, maybe I'm not even going to have kids. Maybe I can't. And then I started to cry even harder because I thought, well, maybe the reason I'll never have kids is because I'll never find a husband who would want to marry me. And I started to cry just oh so hard. And then I started to pray and I was mad. I was mad at Heavenly Father. And I yelled at him and I said, why have you done this to me? Really? Why have you done this to me? I didn't do anything to you. I was just being normal, average, regular. Why have you taken away so much from me? And I probably didn't deserve it, but in his mercy, which by definition means undeserved, Heavenly Father answered me and chastised me, which I did deserve and said, don't covet because I have given you more. I think sometimes we see the less that we have in this life and we think of it as less, but Heavenly Father looks at our trials as maybe something to help us to complement our strengths and provide us with a, with a unique skill set as we accomplish our personal missions 
in this life, as we utilize our talents and our Bishop H. Berg Peterson said, one of the greatest challenges is to overcome the feeling that we are unimportant, that we are not special and unique. Then he says, do you think for a moment that Heavenly Father would have sent one of his children to this earth by accident without the possibility of a significant work to perform? You were preserved to come to this earth at this time for a special purpose, not just a few of you, but all of you. All of us have a unique purpose why we are here. And it's through our spiritual gifts, our talents, and our trials and our circumstances that we can't change that provide us the skill set to accomplishing what it is we came to this earth to do. I learned after I was paralyzed that you could ask for spiritual gifts. And I didn't know this. This was new to me, like just in an institute class. And <clears throat> I remember thinking, oh my goodness, well, what if I personally had the gift to heal and the gift to be healed? Like I would be set. I could just heal myself. This would be amazing. And so I started thinking about it and I was like, well, I could ask for those gifts, you know? And as I pondered more and more, I was like, well, maybe I'll just ask for the gift to be healed, you know, and then I'll, I'll feel good about, you know, my life or whatever, and I'll be ready. And so I was thinking that was what I was going to do. So I'm sitting in the passenger seat of a car outside of a store. And my mom was inside shopping and I just was waiting in the car. And I, you know, it was busy street behind me and I was in this busy parking lot and stuff. And I'm sitting there contemplating, pondering how I could get the gift of the faith to be healed. And I folded my arms and I said a prayer and I said, Heavenly Father, Brother Thatcher, my institute teacher, just told me that I could, that I could pray and ask for spiritual gifts. I would really like the gift of the faith to be healed. Will you please give it to me? What do I have to do to get it? And I hear very clearly the Spirit say to me, get out of the car. And I'm like, huh? I've been paralyzed probably, I don't know two weeks at home, four months in the hospital, but like barely, barely discharged from the hospital. I can't even pick my own nose at this point, you know, for me to exit the car, I'm going to have to get my wheelchair, which is disassembled in the back seat directly behind me. I can't even touch it. Like I'm reaching behind me, but I don't, I mean, my arms, I don't know how to work my new paralyzed body. And to get out of the car, I'm just going to have to jump out of the car. And I was like, Heavenly Father, you're going to be kidding me. I can't jump out of this car. And, but I, so I put my hand on the, on the handle because I really want the gift of the faith to be healed. And I put my hand on the handle of the door and I, and I look up and I'm waiting for Heavenly Father to say, okay, you did it, you know, but I, I don't get that satisfaction. And so I open the door and I just crack it open and I wait for Heavenly Father to say, okay, I could see you're trying. You got it. You did it but I don't have the satisfaction. So then I push open the door and I'm like, Heavenly Father, I'm really gonna do it. I'm really gonna do it. I'm gonna get out of this car. Do you see me? Do you see me? And he doesn't, I don't feel the satisfaction that I did enough. So I pick up, and all of this is very terribly hard for me. And I pick up my one leg and I put it out of the car and I'm like, I'm really gonna do it. I'm gonna get out of this car, you know, but I don't feel it yet, you know? So then I get the other leg and I put it outside. And I'm like, I'm going to do it for reals, you know, and I've got both legs out of the car and I'm sitting there and I'm brand new paralyzed and, and I'm, I'm 97 pounds. And I'm, I'm like, Heavenly Father, I am really going to get out of this car. Do I have the gift of the faith to be healed yet? And I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I just don't feel it. And I'm like, and I really want it. I want it. I want the gift of the faith to be healed. Thinking maybe when I get out of the car, I'm just going to stand up, you know, and Heavenly Father will be like, good job. You know, you did it. You know, you've had your test and, and I've got my hands on the, you know, on the seat and I'm like, I'm really going to do it. I'm really going to do it. And I'm really going to do it. Heavenly Father, I'm really going to do it. And then finally, I'm like, you know, I really just better do it. I really just better do it. If I'm going to have the gift of the faith to be healed, I better do what Heavenly Father told me to do. And so I closed my eyes and I pushed myself off and thinking I'm maybe going to stand up, but I didn't. I just land in a crumpled heap, like on the ground of the parking lot in this like little pile of paralyzed girl and my heart explodes there are no words to tell you the feeling that i had that went from my heart all the way through my paralyzed body that was in some crumpled heap on the parking lot ground 
as I was filled with the satisfaction that I'd done what I was told to do and that I now had the gift of the faith to be healed. <laughs> and that has sustained me through 16 years of being paralyzed as I know that whenever God's ready, I'm ready. And I tell him sometimes, Heavenly Father, I'm gonna go be set apart for this calling. If by chance you would like to tell me that I can rise and walk, just want you to know that I'm ready. <laughs> I have the gift of the faith to be healed because I asked for it. And then I did what Heavenly Father asked me to do. And it's okay. It's okay. I'm ready when God's ready. And I'm good with that. I really am. I'm good with that. I'm now seeking other gifts that help me to accomplish the missions and the purposes that Heavenly Father has for me as an individual with my strengths and my talents combined with my trials and my my hardships, as I put those two things together and find somebody to serve, I've discovered purpose for my life. People, when they come for me for mentoring, I tell them, you know, trials, you need to answer two questions. One, what can I learn from this? And two, who can I serve because of this? Because when you can answer those two questions, when your life hits a trial, you have discovered purpose for your life and a mission for yourself at that time and a reason for this hardship and this trial that has entered your life. Missions are accomplished when we take our strengths and our talents and our trials and our weaknesses, put them together and find someone to serve. I, with my trials, being in a wheelchair and being paralyzed and my talents of being able to plan stuff. Before I was paralyzed, I was a party planner. That's all that I ever wanted to do. And I really just like parties, but I discovered the Miss Wheelchair America pageant. And I was like, I want to be a part of this. And so I was a part of that. And then I founded Miss Wheelchair Utah. And then in Miss Wheelchair Utah, I host a pageant every year and a little pageant. And one time during general conference, I was asking Heavenly Father, what do I need to work on? And he told me, you need to work on temperance. And I was driving my car. I drive my car with a little hand controls. I have a YouTube video on it. You can Google me and find it. But, but I was driving my car around on the freeway, pondering how I could grow in temperance. Heavenly Father said, seek the gift of temperance. And I said to myself, how can I get the gift of temperance? And I'm driving around pondering, pondering, pondering. How can I get the gift of temperance? And then an idea comes to me and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can get the gift of temperance by practicing temperance as I drive. And I will go the speed limit all the time. And so I slowed down and I started to go the speed limit. And it was really hard. It was really hard for a long time. It's still really hard sometimes, but now I still go to the speed limit and I practice in temperance. And I've been practicing for many, many years temperance as I drive my car, the speed limit. And uh, during a Miss Wheelchair Utah event where we have lots and lots of volunteers, we have lots and lots of princesses. I don't know if we have a princess picture somewhere, but this is, you know, one of the events and we were practicing for it and we had catering. And not only do we have, you know, tons of princesses, volunteers, and tons of cute girls in wheelchairs and tons of volunteers and stuff. We have catering and I was off doing something at one end of the event. And then at the other end of the event where the elevators were, I heard what sounded like a giant cart, like a metal cart with wheels, a giant cart full of glass items and food and possibly tambourines fall down an elevator shaft. And it was, it echoed, reverberated through the whole event. It was so unprofessional and I was so mad. And I, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know? And so I started rolling my wheelchair back and I am going to reprimand fiercely these volunteers who have let this carton full of glass and tambourines like fall down this elevator shaft. And as I'm pushing my wheelchair with gusto and I'm gonna go and tell them off, the spirit speaks to my heart and says, this is what you've been practicing for. You need to go the speed limit now. And I grabbed my wheels on my wheelchair and I, slowed down and I even just turned around and I don't even know to this day, I don't know what happened. I don't know, like, I'm sure it wasn't full of tambourines. We didn't even have any tambourines, but I don't know what happened. I don't know who was involved. I just let them clean it up and let them say, just don't tell Meg. <laughs> and Meg never knew, I never knew. At the very end of that same event, one of the leaders of the volunteers that was there came up to me and she said, is your, is your real name Grace? And I said, what? What? Usually people think my real name is Megan, but she's like, is your real name Grace? And I'm like, no. And she goes, oh, I was pretty sure your real name was Grace and your middle name was under fire. And I was like, what? And she said, I have never seen someone act with so much temperance. 
and it made me feel really good. And I hope that doesn't come across as like bragging or anything. I just felt so good because I'm not, I am not a, I would not describe myself as a temperate person, but I would describe myself as someone who's actively seeking for temperance because that's a spiritual gift that I want right now that will bless my life and help me to better accomplish my mission in this life. I just want to say that if you have trials right now, you can ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And who can I serve because of this? When you can find someone to serve, you found reasons and purpose for this trial. And then you can ask for the gifts from Heavenly Father that you need to accomplish the missions and the purposes that he has for you so that you can serve these people. Ulysses Suarez said, each of us must look around to the sheep who are facing similar circumstances and help them proceed on their journey toward eternal life. As we find those sheep, we find purpose for not just our strengths, but we find purpose for our trials and the things that those have taught us. We need to do whatever it takes to get the gift that we've asked Heavenly Father for and do whatever it is he says to do so that we can have it in our life so that we can bless not just our life, but the lives of those we serve and love and then enjoy and exercise our right to use this gift. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 